Hey there, hello there, hello there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to a new project that I've done. It's called the NCAA Legends Tourney Tournament. Explained. Basically, I'm going to explain to you the format and the different ways each year went from 1956 to 2019. So basically, the format was that I had an old Sports Illustrated almanac. And they had the AP Top 20, or in earlier years, the AP Top 10. And I basically decided to do a tournament based on that. Starting in 1956 to 2019, because that gives me 64, term, 64 college years, I decided to have the best team, the 64 tournaments. And basically, my original plan was to have the winners of each tournament basically um, face each other in the legendary 64 cup and all that. But then I'm like, well, some some people would be complaining that maybe a lesser known team like Appalachian State or Tulsa or whoever, whoever got to the top 20 could win this tournament. So I decided to go with a different format. The format is this. Any team... Basically put, there were 20 teams, but in the AP, in the Almanac, it had, AP did the top 10, then the UPI did 11 to 20, so, so they added the UPI teams from 11 to 20. So what I did was that I made it into two split tournaments. Basically, if you were 1, 2, 3, or 4 at the AP poll, you automatically went into the quarterfinals, and you would wait for four other teams. Then what I did was I had the from five to twenty face each other in in a sixteen team tournament, eight matches, and the winner of those eight matches would face each other, and then those four winners would go to the quarterfinals and based on numbers and all that would face a team for in the quarterfinals. Of course, <clears throat> what I did was that in rounds one and like in the quarters and round two, if will like no I did a final four basically the the stadium where the number one team in the AP poll played would be the stadium that would host the final four both semis in the final well the cotton bowl the orange bowl the sugar bowl and the rose bowl being big four and all that had teams but there were times that Arizona had championship caliber matches so basically Arizona got taken and they had hosted some events. So I could tell you the breakdown of of things. And New Orleans, the Sugar Bowl hosted 14 tournaments. The Rose Bowl hosted 15 finals. Miami slash New Orange Bowl hosted 15 times. Dallas hosted 11 and Arizona hosted nine times in the final. And I made sure that the, the Final Four venue did not repeat in back-to-back -back years. Otherwise, I would just find another place and then do all that. So, basic, so basically, um, I did that. So I'll give you an example of the early years because after a certain year, things had changed. Give you give you an example. Um, 1980, I have it right in front of me. The 20 versus 5 matchup was SMU FSU. 19 versus 6 was Mississippi State Nebraska. 18 7 was Miami Bama. 17 8 Purdue Notre Dame. 16 9 was Washington Penn State. 15 10 was Ohio State North Carolina. 14 11 was Baylor SC. And 13 12 was UCLA BYU. The winners of those eight matchups would face each other. And it ended up being Ohio State, Penn State, Mississippi State, FSU, Baylor, BYU, and Purdue, Bama. And then the winners of those ones, Penn State, Mississippi State, BYU, and Bama, all moved on to the quarterfinals to face Michigan, Oklahoma, Georgia, and Pitt. In the quarterfinals, those tournaments were at the Rose, Cotton, Orange, and Gator. Well, there were times that basically... Um, Stadiums could not be in the Big Four, like the quarterfinals. Remember, the Fiesta Bowl was not really popularized until the 1970s. So thus, basically, they didn't really get a lot of quarterfinals. 
But here's the thing. The number one team, wherever they're associated with, and Georgia was, and I put Georgia in the Orange Bowl for some, well, because the title was won at the Sugar Bowl, then the Sugar Bowl got the Final Four. So then I was thinking, Georgia, Pitt, Oklahoma, and Michigan, where each one would be. Michigan is traditionally with the Rose Bowl, Oklahoma is traditionally with the Cotton Bowl, and Georgia. So it was a Georgia or Pitt. So I decided to randomly draw, do a dice roll, and Georgia ended up hosting at the Orange Bowl, and then Pitt hosted at the Gator Bowl. So of course those four teams, four teams involved, basically quarter semis finals to find a champion. Now comes the hard part in this stuff: seeding. Now at times. Basically, 20 versus 5, 19 versus 6, 18, 7, 17, 8, 16, 9, 15, 10, 14, 11, 13, 12. It was just basic. However, I tried my best to avoid first-round matchups to be conference, conference, like the teams in the same conference. Now, the problem is that how you would be thinking, how do you know which teams were in each conference each year? I didn't go by that theory. Like 1980, I didn't go by those conferences. I went by 2019 and the current conference format. So basically, when I explained the teams and their point totals and all that, and how they got to turn got to the tournaments and such, I'll explain the format. But anyway, I had times that I had to switch over, I tried to make no conference, no interconference matchups. Well, 2019 format in the first round or, and even the second round. But however, sometimes when I tried, when I set up matches and the winners got to face certain teams and numbers on like a quarterfinal board, I ended up having two teams face each other. Such was the case with Ohio State Penn State. I had no choice. So I tried my best to make sure conferences and they uh, didn't have an interconference matchup. But sometimes that didn't work out. One of my plans was that if you want a, a championship, you automatically qualify for the round of 64. Well, you obviously qualify for the, the tournament. But then I decided, but then I had an issue because I decided to have the two teams per conference rule. And some conferences, let's face it, didn't have two quality teams who made tournament appearances. So basically, there were 11 conferences. 11 times 2 is 22, but two conferences only had one solid team, so I subtracted and made it 20 teams. So I made 20, and then if you miss, and then I did basically, if you were not in the top two in the conference, but yet you won a title game, based on your points, you slide in from 21 to 32. So that meant that there would be some schools that actually have to qualify for the tournament, even though they won one, because their point totals were low. Now, I'll give you a rundown of the teams that won and all that, all these titles. Iowa won four championships, 56, 84, 90, and 09. Florida won 57, 69, 85, 92, and 07. LSU won in 58, 2010, 2015. SC, 1959, 2003, 2017. Ole Miss, 1960, Arkansas, 61, 71, Ohio State, 62, 65, 86, and 04, Missouri, 63, Nebraska, 64, 95, 96, 99, Bama, 66, 73, 75, 77, 83, Penn State, 67, 81, 82, Georgia, 68, 02, Texas, 70, 01, 05, Auburn, 72, 94, 2K, Michigan 74, 80, 98, Pitt 76, Notre Dame 78, Oklahoma 79, 87, 2K8, Oklahoma State 88, Colorado 89, Clemson 91 in 2018, UCLA 93, Washington 97, West Virginia 06, Boise 2011, Stanford 2012, 13 and 16, FSU 2014, and Wisconsin 2019. So, basically, you know, you win, you get these things. Now the point format will be talked about when I talk about the conferences and the and the stat boards. So basically, yeah, we'll see about that.
Now the format seems to be simple. Like you basically get out of the first round, the second round, four teams go to quarterfinals, and then eight team tournament to find out who won and lost. There were some format changes. A lot of people probably would be like, what if it's school won back to back years? What would you do? So in the case of Penn State in 1981-82, what happened was that I eventually, after Penn State won for the second straight year, I decided to say that their next appearance, they would automatically forfeit to teams. So basically, that ended up being the fact that 1985, they were booted. They were disqualified. 83 and 84, they didn't even qualify. So in 85, they were in the quarterfinals. So what I did was I took that quarterfinal out of play and, and said that whoever had, if I had an interconference matchup, in the second round, I moved that up to the quarterfinals, which would mean that basically, if you lose, you get more points. So Ohio State and Nebraska bumped into each other. They would have bumped each other in the second round. But, but basically, I decided to move that. No, sorry, I moved LSU Florida. Up. Yeah, Ohio State and Nebraska at the same time. But LSU Florida, because the quarterfinal that Penn State abandoned was the Sugar Bowl, I moved that game to the Sugar Bowl. It meant that those guys would face in the quarterfinals. Okay, so then comes the hard part. If a conference ended up winning three straight titles, well, conference being 2019 format, then what I did was that that conference would be penalized by losing, by teams automatically losing. So there will be some years that there aren't as many round one matches as you think they are. So basically what I did in theory was that I made sure that the road teams lost every time. And we actually had a situation like that in 82, after Penn State. Because Michigan won in 1980, so the Big Ten had won three straight years. So I punished the, so I punished the road teams in the first round if they were the Big Ten. Unfortunately, there were, old, there were four teams. There were four teams in the Big Ten that were in the 16-team first round. Iowa was the only road team, so Iowa automatically lost to Clemson. But I didn't want to punish the home teams because, you know, the money they were making. So Michigan, Ohio State, and Illinois. However, I decided at the last second to put Bama to beat Illinois, even though Illinois was the home team. So basically, they would be punished in a sense. Fortunately, though, they Big Ten did win the title for the third straight year. Fourth straight year, right? So anyway... Also, if a school ended up going to 10 finals, no matter how many finals you win, they would be disqualified for the rest of their tournament appearances. So basically, we only had three that fell under it. Ohio State, Nebraska, and Alabama got to 10 finals. So basically, their appearances would be automatic disqualifications. But there were times that, that they were in the first round. So first round, they... It wasn't their opponent that automatically won. I basically decided to randomly select a school to take their spot. If, like Ohio State, Nebraska, and Bama got in the finals, I mean, got automatic spots in the quarterfinals because they were top four in the AP after they got to the 10th final, they would be abandoned. It would be abandoned, and basically, I would move a second round matchup to the quarterfinals based on conference. <clears throat> interconference if necessary. Now, of course, in the later years, in the 2010s, there was an issue because Ohio State and Clemson, no, Ohio State and Bama, would both make the top four. So what I did was try to move the five seeds into the quarterfinals to have at least three quarterfinals set up and then have a second round matchup to quarterfinals. And that's how it is. And so you'll know about that format. The point format for my tournament is basically this. If you win the tournament, you get 20 points. If you end up being runner-up, you get 10 points. If you get third place or fourth place, if you're in the semifinals and you lose, I didn't have a third place game, you get seven points. If you fell in the quarterfinals, you lose five, you get five points. If you fall in the second round, you get three points. And if you lose your first game, obviously you only get one point. So basically, yeah, there were times that schools had a lot of 
appearances. I know you're asking yourself, like, if you have, like, 30 or 40 appearances, you're going to get, like, tons of points. But I decided in the in the error of, of fairness, basically what I did is I had the 10 appearance. I had a 10 appearance. Your, your top 10 appearances by points count towards your total and all that. Because there would be a lot of schools who have been in more than 10 of these tournaments, obviously. And, you know, giving the smaller schools a chance to score the points. Now, here's the thing. It wasn't easy because a lot of times your first 10 appearances were stuck and then you bounce back with points. So, of course, I had to redo the numbers and all that. So, I'm going to tell you the, the 11 conferences and basically who's qualified and all that. So, sit back. First, we have Conference USA. Conference USA only had set 10 appearances between six goals. So basically, six goals had 10 appearances, and that was it, because Conference USA kind of sucked. And a few of them were even based on randomization. The highest scoring school was Southern Mississippi with five points in three appearances. They, they lost twice in the first round, but they beat Arkansas in 2011 in the first round and lost in the second round, but they got five points. They've been the only school to win a match in the Conference USA. Marshall, one appearance. Middle Tennessee, one appearance. Western Kentucky, one appearance. North Texas, one appearance. And Rice, three appearances. Could not win a game. So thus, even though Rice got three points for their three appearances, basically I decided not to give Rice an automatic spot because, you know, they didn't win, so they don't deserve it. Self Miss automatically qualifies for the tournament as the Conference USA champion. In the MAC, we had six schools take part. The high scoring group one was Miami of Ohio with eight points in four appearances. They won two straight first round games, but they've lost and they lost and then lost the second round subsequently. And then they lost in the first round both times. Ohio was second with two three point appearances, including a famous overtime game against Arkansas that they could have won, but they choked. In a sense. So, yeah, two three point efforts by Ohio State got them second with six points. Toledo, Western Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan, and Central Michigan did not make the top two. Central Michigan, even though they won a matchup against Canada State. Ugh. Over in the Mountain West, we had Boise State take part in 10 tournaments. They actually won a tournament. That was in 19. No, it was in 2011 against South Carolina. They went to two finals and practically did decently. They had three five-point appearances, which means they lost three times in the quarterfinals, but they had four albatrosses, single-point albatrosses, which meant they lost in the first round. But they scored the highest in the group with 59. Second place ended up being Colorado State with 13. They had a wild, massive run to the semifinals. I forget what year, but Colorado State got to one semifinal. Now you may be making eight points. Want to be seven? I forgot to add that if you play in an overtime game and you win, you get a bonus point no matter what happens to you the rest of the tournament. I figured that not many teams would play in or even win two overtime games. I think that bit me in the butt once. Yeah, Clemson in 2013 won against Oklahoma State and Auburn in overtime, but Clemson did lose, but I gave Clemson eight points instead of 10. I think they lost. Wait, did Clemson lose in the final? No. Clemson lost in the semifinal, so I just gave them eight points. Regardless, there were other schools. Every school in the Mountain West, except for UNLV, actually took part in at least one event. Air Force, Air Force actually won two won games in two of their five appearances. Well, the two first round games, so they did well. Fresno, despite the fact they got to the quarterfinals one year, did not Qualified for the top two. So Boise and Colorado State automatically qualified. Nevada also was bit. They had one quarterfinal appearance. But they didn't get into the top two. But the Pac-10 was filled. A lot of schools. Though the school with the least appearances in the tournament was Cal with six. We had seven schools that made it. At least ten, ten plus appearances. Washington, Stanford, UCLA, and USC all qualified for the tournament based on their wins and their point totals. 
the top two ended up being USC with 126 and Stanford with 102, which meant those two schools would automatically qualify. However, because of Washington and UCLA winning tournaments and their point totals, they actually qualified for the for the first 32. So basically, that was huge and all that. Colorado, unfortunately, 58 points. That was not enough for them, even though they won a tournament, to actually qualify for the round. Of, to qualify automatically, so they have to go through what we call the ladder match. We'll explain that later. Next is the Big 12. Um, lots of schools made seven of the Big 12 schools made it to 10 plus tournaments. Iowa State only made it to one tournament. That's kind of pathetic. The second least was Texas Tech and Kansas making it to five appearances. But the top two teams in the Big 12 were Texas and Oklahoma. Texas 116, Oklahoma 113. It was close. Right down the pike. Oklahoma State did qualify. They won a, they won a tournament. They did qualify based on points for the for the first 32. So basically the top 32 seeds. So that puts West Virginia, even though they won a tournament. They were crappy in the other tournaments with four albatrosses of one point. 47 points, they'll have to go through the ladder. The Big Ten. So seven saw eight schools get to at least 10 tournaments, which was amazing. The top two schools, well, the top two schools were Nebraska and Ohio State, only because they made it to 10 final. They scored a lot of points. But, man, three other schools got triple digits. Iowa, 120. Penn State, 119. Michigan, Michigan excuse me, 117. Those three schools did make it to the t top 32 seats based on their point total. So, yeah, amazing. The I made the independence of soon after conference of five teams. Notre Dame, Army, BYU, Empire State, slash Team PSU, and Team Canada State. It's my team. Because it's my tournament and I can do whatever I want. Well, Notre Dame won a tournament in 1978, so they got 72 points the first. Remy Young made it to a final, but they got 55 points for second. So, Notre Dame and Brigham Young qualified. And then Army, BSU, and Canada State will be in a special little tournament to find out a spot. Get me home tonight. Get me home tonight. Mom. So anyway, um, the ACC had seven schools get to ten tournaments at the least. The point totals was tough. Clemson with 89, FSU with 87. They got to the top two, so they basically qualified automatically. Pitts with their 72 points when they, they won the tournament back in the 1970s, but they got 72 points, so they qualified for the top 32 and all that, so good for them. A few schools did have finals losses, but they'll be going through the ladder matches. The American Conference, only one school made it to 10 plus tournaments. At Houston, obviously they were the best, 33 points, including 8 points for one parent, well, semifinals and an overtime. And second ended up being Navy, who got to one final. They took five points in their in another matchup. Then Navy with three, got a three point tournament and then three one point tournaments. Hold on, Cincy, even though they got to a quarter final, and South Florida even well, so, well SMU got to multiple quarterfinals, and SM, South Florida got to one semifinal. They will be pushed to the latter tournament. All that they didn't automatically qualify, and the SEC. Well, the Sun Belt, only two schools got in, Louisiana Monroe and App State, because of randomization. So that was huge. So Louisiana Monroe, because they actually got to the quarterfinals and won a game, actually got the only Sun Belt on max spot. App State will have App State is the latter winner because there's no other Sun Belt team in, but App State might get in. Well, we could only hope. The SEC was amazing. They had, what, 11 schools get into 10 or more tournaments. Vanderbilt only got to one tournament. Prophetic. Kentucky got to five tournaments, and South Carolina only got to nine tournaments. Those were the only three schools in the SEC that didn't get to 10 tournaments. The point total was hard. Well, Bama obviously was number one in the SEC because they got to 10 finals first. LSU 
Well, at Florida, 145. Well, Florida, if you win five tournaments, they got in. That's the number two seed. Georgia, Missouri, Louisiana State, Auburn, and Arkansas. They won at least one tournament. And their point totals were good enough to make it to the final 32. So, that's they're in. So, that's a huge method of relief. Okay, so the top 32 seats basically were set up. If you were in the top two in each of the 11 conferences, you automatically got a spot from 1 to 32. One, well, 1 to 20. They actually made it that the top two seats would tackle each other and all that. So for, it was supposed to be from 1 to 22, but because the Sun Belt and the Conference USA didn't have two winners, two teams that won, basically their spots were just deleted. So basically, based on point total, I needed to figure out what I could have done. So by so Bama has the one seed, Nebraska's number two, Ohio State's number three, Florida's number four. But Bama, Nebraska, and Ohio State is basically based on the fact that they were the fastest to get to ten finals. So they were one, two, three. Florida number four because they have the highest point total afterwards. USC ended up number five, Texas number six, Oklahoma number seven, Stanford number eight, Clemson number nine, FSU number ten, Notre Dame number eleven, Boise twelve, thirteen Houston, fourteen Miami of Ohio, Southern Miss fifteen, Louisiana Monroe sixteen, Birmingham Young seventeen, Navy eighteen, Colorado State nineteen, Ohio University twenty. So then I took all the winners who weren't in the top two in each of the conferences and basically took their point totals. So in order of point totals, here, here's who qualified for the top 32. Iowa ended up 21st with their 120. LSU had 120 points as well, but Iowa won more titles, so Iowa got the tie break on LSU. Number 23 was Penn State with their 119. Michigan, 117 with their 24. 25th was Auburn at 105. Georgia, 100 points for 26. Arkansas, 27. See, we'll get 90, 95 points. Pitt, number 28 with their um, 72 points. Washington, 71 points for 29th. Missouri, 67 points for 30th. Oklahoma State, 64 points for 31st. And UCLA got in 63 for number 32 beating out Wisconsin by two points. So those are your top 32 seeds. So basically, you're going to be asking yourself, is it a 32 tournament? The answer is no, because I have come up with an ingenious way to get 32 more schools. So I'm making ladder matches, ladder cups. But for three conferences, there will be, there will be qualifiers into this ladder tournament. Mountain West will have two matches, San Jose versus Air Force and Utah State, Wyoming. Now, of course, Air Force and Wyoming will get home games in that matter. The winners of those two matchups go to the latter matches. In the American, it's the same thing. In the American, there will be two games. Memphis takes on Central Florida and Tulsa versus Tulane. The winner of those two games would actually face each other, and the winner goes to the latter match will get a ladder uh, spot. And the Pac-10 will have Cal versus Arizona State. The winner will go to the ladder tournament. Now you'll be asking yourself, what the heck is the ladder tournament? Well, I remember bowling at times having this ladder stuff. So basically, two teams would start, and then basically whoever won that would face a certain team. And then basically that, that person would move on to the next round so on and on and on because there would be someone to fill. So here's an example. So here's an example. The Big Ten. Based on points, Illinois and Purdue would, would fa will face each other in the first part of the Big Ten ladder. The winner of that game gets Indiana. Whoever wins that game, even if it, well, Indiana or whoever went, or Illinois slash Purdue, the winner of that game will face Michigan State. And then the winner of that game takes on Wisconsin, and the winner of that game is the Big Ten minor champion. Capiche? All right, so the big, okay, so the Mountain West, as I said, San Jose versus Air Force, Utah State, Wyoming, those two teams will join Nevada and Fresno. 
who are in the ladder. And basically, the winner of those two matches would face each other in a one-game playoff to get the ladder cup. In the independent circuit, of course, there's only three schools that didn't qualify. <coughs> so Team Empire State will take an Army. Army ended up beating them on points, so Army will host BYU. BSU. The winner of that game faces us, Canada State, and in a one-game playoff, and the winner gets into the tournament as a ladder champion. I talked about the Big Ten. The Big 12 ladder will start with Texas Tech and NC State. The winner of that game takes on Baylor. The winner of that game takes on Texas Christian. And the winner, the winner of that one takes on West Virginia. And the winner of that is the ladder champion. The ACC, Virginia Tech, will start against Boston College. The winner of that game takes on North Carolina. And the winner of that game takes on Georgia Tech. And the winner of that game takes on Miami. And then the winner of that game wins the ladder. And the American, who... As we said, the 14 mini tournament, the winner of that tournament will face South Florida, while Cincy will take on SMU, and the winner of those two games will face each other in one game play. Conference USA is Marshall versus Western Kentucky and North Texas versus Rice. The winner of those matchups will face each other to be the latter champion. The MAC, Eastern Michigan takes on Toledo, and Western Michigan takes on Central Michigan. The winners of those two matchups will need to be the Mac champion, if you will. The SEC will have a ladder. Mississippi State takes on Texas A&M. The winner of that game will take on Tennessee. The winner of that game takes on South Carolina. The winner of that game takes on Ole Miss. And the winner of that game will be the ladder champion. And the Pac-10 is whoever wins the Cal-Arizona State game will take on Utah. The winner of that game takes on Oregon State. And then it'll be Oregon, Colorado, and the ladder champion. So it's going to be harsh, but... You know, it is what it is. And hopefully we have a 64-team field. Otherwise, I might have to do other play-in games with different conferences. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But Now, a note of fact. If you win two, if a team wins two ladder matches as the row team, but does not win, or no, sorry, wins two ladder matches, but doesn't become the ladder champion, that team will, on, will automatically jump in as well into the tournament because they prove themselves in such a sense. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review of the tournaments and all that. Hopefully you catch on with stuff and all that. There will be a preview show when I do the Legend 64 team tournament. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good day.